Okay, so what happens to your Michigan estate plan if you move? Well, we get that question a lot. Someone has put together a plan a while ago, perhaps when they were younger. Maybe they're going to relocate now during retirement, or they're relocating perhaps to live near the children or the grandchildren, or perhaps for business reasons that they're relocating. But it, it is not all that uncommon for people to move from state to state. And the question is sometimes presented, what happens? I had this estate plan put together, or I'm putting this estate plan together in Michigan, but what happens to my plan if, let's say, I move to Arizona or I move to Florida? And there's really a couple things that have to be considered. We have federal law and we have state law. Now, the good news is you probably figured this one out already. Federal law is federal law, wherever you happen to be. And the federal laws that are most often involved with estate planning are going to be in the area of taxes. We're going to look at federal estate tax. That's a tax that the feds collect on the size of your estate at the time of your death. We're going to look at federal gift taxes. Those are the taxes that the feds might assess when we make gifts to people. So those laws stay the same. And the same thing about distributions from 401ks and IRAs, all essentially tax, federal tax-related questions. Doesn't matter what state you go in, uh, the federal law is going to be the same in those respects. Then we have state law. We have 50 states. In theory, 50 states could all adopt their own laws regarding things such as trusts, wills, perhaps powers of attorney, health care powers of attorney, etc. Well, back in 1969, there was a movement to try and simplify the process by getting all 50 states to adopt the same uniform probate code that would be the state law that would govern things such as what makes a will legal, how do you probate an estate, what's a trust, what's required for powers of attorney, health care powers of attorney, patient advocates, etc. And although that was proposed to be adopted by all 50 states, only 16 states adopted the original Uniform Probate Code. Michigan happened to be one of them. And since then, the probate code has gone through a couple different changes. And most recently, Michigan adopted what is now called EPIC, uh, which is the current code that many of the other estates have adopted. So there is an attempt on a national level to get states to adopt similar codes which would certainly make it easier for people as they move from state to state. But here's what we tell people. I don't know if you're going to move to Arizona, for example. I can't tell you. Uh, I, I, I probably know, but my Michigan license does not allow me to tell you what the law is in Arizona or the law is in Florida or wherever it happens to be. But Given the number of states that have now adopted uniform codes, in all likelihood, the law that the state you are moving to is going to be very similar to the law in the state of Michigan. So we tell people all the time, your documents are generally going to be good whatever state that you travel to. However, it is prudent planning. Once you relocate to another state, we tell clients all the time, have your documents reviewed by an attorney in that state. And let me give you an example. I am sitting here in San Francisco this morning, had a client over the last couple of years move to Michigan from California, brought in their California documents so that we could review them. And it was just a matter of making a couple adjustments to the trust because some of the provisions that Michigan has regarding trust were a little bit different than they had out here in California. We, have, we had to make sure 
that there would not be any problems down the line if there are any issues that were raised concerning the trust. The other thing that becomes important, if you were to look at, let's say you had a trust prepared, certainly by our office in Michigan, you're going to find that there's a paragraph in there that says, in settling the trust or in interpreting the trust, it is to be governed by Michigan law. Now, if you move to Arizona, you could still have a Michigan trust that is controlled by Michigan law. There is no prohibition from your choosing to do that. You can choose which state's law is going to apply in that case to your living trust. But it's a practical matter, and that is if you're going to stay in Arizona, do you really want your trust to be controlled by Michigan law, or would you rather have it controlled now by Arizona law as a, as a practical matter for this reason? If you're in Arizona and you have a trust that's going to be controlled by Michigan law and an issue does arise, the question, practically speaking, are you going to have any difficulty in Arizona locating an attorney who is licensed in Michigan who can advise you on the trust under Michigan law? So sometimes it's a practical matter that we might look at a document and say, hey, at a minimum, even if everything else is the same, if there are no other changes and there's no other adjustments that need to be made, perhaps you might consider and talk to an attorney in the new state about whether or not it would make sense to amend the document so that it will now be controlled by the law of the state that you have decided to live in. Now, maybe... You're not sure you're going to stay in that state. Maybe you're going from Michigan and you're going to spend some time in California, but you know you're not going to really settle down in California. So you don't really know. Well, it might not make sense to keep changing and changing because Michigan law can still control the plan. But again, that's going to be something that you need to kind of put together with what is your overall plan of how long do you plan to stay in the state. Certainly, if you're out traveling. Uh, and you're going to do perhaps a tour of all 50 states, maybe that's the goal, but you're still a Michigan resident and you plan on coming back to Michigan, it probably doesn't make sense every time you're in a new state for a short period of time to look at adjusting your estate planning documents. There's one other thing too. Some states will have a different document or an additional document beyond the documents that we normally prepare in Michigan, Or some states might not have similar documents. And let me give you an example. In Michigan now, we have a document where we do an appointment of a funeral representative. That's where you can name the person who will make your funeral arrangements for you if those arrangements need to be confirmed or made or adjusted or whatever else happens after your death. Well, that's a Michigan law concerning what's required to appoint a funeral representative. That doesn't mean Ohio has the same law or Missouri has the same law. So we can have some documents that we prepare in Michigan that maybe just don't get prepared in other states. Another example, though, some states will have laws that recognize what's called a living will. A living will is a separate legal document in which you indicate what your end-of-life wishes are, such as if you're in a permanent vegetative state, irreversible coma, etc. Well, Michigan does not have a statute concerning living wills. That's why we don't prepare them. We include that language in your health care power of attorney, but in some states, and I think Ohio, for example, might be one of them, There's a separate statute that says here's what a living will has to have in it. So in some cases, the review that you might have might cause you to realize that maybe there's an additional document that you might need in that state. Or have you look at maybe a document that you've prepared here that might not be applicable in that state that you've moved to. And the other area that 
It's probably the biggest area that we find is in the area of health care powers of attorney. There appears not to be as much consistency from state to state in the health care power of attorney. Pretty much trusts seem to be pretty consistent, and I only base that upon when people meet with us and they bring a trust in from another state or they bring a will in from another estate or a power of attorney, but the area that seems to have not as much consistency is the health care power of attorney. So that's something that you're going to want to certainly take a look at when you move to another state. And not not just from a legal standpoint, but there's there's also a practical matter to consider with your health care power of attorney, and that is this. That health care power of attorney is most often used when you find yourself being rushed to a hospital or maybe to a doctor's office, and now someone's looking at that power of attorney making decisions about what can and cannot be done, who they need to contact, what the legal authority is of the agent that they are going to be dealing with. And just as a practical matter, if you're going to be, again, let's say in Arizona, it is more likely that the emergency room doctors or your doctor or whatever medical professional you're seeing is going to be more familiar with the state's form of a health care power of attorney than Michigan. Now, perhaps not Arizona, because we have a lot of folks from Michigan that go to Arizona. But the idea being on a local basis, the treating providers in a state are most likely going to be more familiar with the document that's used in their state. So I tell people all the time, even if all the other documents are fine, you might at least consider having an appropriate health care power of attorney prepared in that state. I have even said to clients who are Michigan residents, and they're not moving, but maybe they spend six months of the year in Florida, or they spend six months out of the year in Arizona, or Colorado, or California, or Hawaii, wherever it happens to be. Well, in that case, it could be very prudent to have a power of attorney, not just the Michigan one, but to have a power of attorney for health care purposes we're talking about in the state where you're spending a, much of your time. So if you're going to be in Florida much of the time, why not have a power of attorney for health care in Florida or a power of attorney for health care in Arizona? You can have multiple power of attorneys for health care and then you're trying to avoid that problem where doctors are not familiar with the document that is being presented to them at the time you're requiring medical care. Again, though, when you do look at moving elsewhere, simply take your documents. Our suggestion, just like we do to people who come to us, have a local attorney review them just to make sure that there aren't any particular tweaks or adjustments that need to be made or recommendations that would be made relative to that particular state. Tuesday with Tom has been brought to you by the estate planning attorneys at Doyle Law PC. To learn how we can help you with your estate plan or with settling a loved one's estate, please call us today at 517-323-7366. That's 517-323-7366.